So now let's continue with this particular book right here, The Grammar of Banga Bantu by James L. McKay, or Mackey, page 6. We found this on the, the Google Books, and it's a free book from the 1800s, and it's very interesting concerning this subject matter right here, The Bantu of the Kafir Family. It says that it occupies a wide domain roughly comprising the whole of the southeast of the continent, reaching southwards to the neighborhood of the Cape, the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa, and northward a little beyond the equator, where it meets the what? Ethiopian group of the Hamitic family, implying that there is a Ethiopian group of the Shemitic family, and the dialects of the Negroes, Notice how they're using these different kind of um, classifications, white supremacist classification, to divide and conquer the people and even cause one portion of the African and continental Ethiopian people to think of themselves as different or even better vis-a-vis -vis white supremacist um, aims and intentions. Anyway, it says the dialects of the Negroes of, of Guinea, thus spreading thus spreading, let's go to the next page, thus spreading north and south over about one half of the whole continent. Now, so I'm going on to say about one-fourth of the natives of Africa speak the various dialects of this family. About one-fourth, right, of the natives of Africa. These are very numerous, it says, and are all derived from one source, which, dot, 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 this is curious, is far from being the case with the languages spoken by the Negro, the Negro tribes in the center and west of the continent. So they say this is far from the, so they say these speak a different language which means they may be of a different tribe. One tribe broke into clans and families, which now are called various tribes. So the languages are different there. Now it says that the mother, the mother tongue of this great family is utterly, they say, unknown. But it may possibly yet be restored in all its essential grammatical and lexical features. In other words, they said, well, they can restore it by going through their studies of the different languages. Now, let's get to the root. The general name of Kafar or Kafir, Kafir, often given to the Bantu family is purely what? Conventional. It's purely whose convention is it? They said the general name of the Kafar, of Kafar, often given to the Bantu family is purely conventional. The word, which is Arabic, so here we get the Arab or the Mohammedan slave trade and influence in the continent, which is Arabic and means infidel. So this word that now is ascribed to the people of sub-Saharan Africa, namely, and certain parts of the East, as the Bantu family, they call them the Kafir or Kafar, Kafir, Right, and then, and it's an Arabic word, and it means infidel, or one who's not a believer in the religion of the invaders, was at first applied to all the tribes of Southeast Africa. Notice that it says at first it was applied, right? So at first it was applied, but was gradually limited by who? The people or outsiders? See, it's giving this, and what's interesting is that they're telling it in the exact way as the reality has come to pass. In other words, they're stating these things as this is the reality beyond dispute without question. And there's an invisible hand at work, the Gentiles, namely, but was gradually limited until it has now come to be restricted to those stretching from the northeast of Cape Colony to Delagoa Bay, Delagoa Bay. Hence, it cannot with propriety be any longer applied to such languages as Kiswahili, Kiswahili, Swahili, 
spoken in Zanzibar. It cannot be applied, but many still do apply. Or to the Ferdinandian in the Gulf of Guinea. Now, they're telling us what the Kafir terminology, that's the Arab influence. Now the Europeans bring their word. So the Arabs brought the word Kafir. You understand? And the Europeans now bring Bantu. And so they agree, and when they now use this terminology, Bantustan, this is coming directly out of Afghanistan, Pakistan, the Ottoman Turkish Empire. The term Bantu, they say, is in every way preferable. Why? Because they are the white supremacists, the Christian part of the invaders, you understand, um, and the colonizers of Africa. You understand? But the term they're saying Bantu is in every way preferable. It is the plural of a word meaning man. It is the plural of a word meaning man or men, but they told us before people. Remember, being a person, being a man, being um, people are all different ideas. But it says it has the sense of men, the sense of men, according to their sensibilities. Remember, when people say something has a sense, they're talking about their own sensibility. So we're reading white supremacist documentation on other people, and they're defining other people for other people, for themselves, but also for use to reduce, you understand, any effectiveness of the people to get together because they're going to put a lot of divide and conquer and supposition and dubious doubts in what they're writing as well. But it says that it has a sense of men, population, people, and may readily be extended to the language itself. It may readily be extended. So they're giving all this license to this terminology. Remember, at this time, there wasn't a lot of people doing this sort of research or explorers. And their system, the system of white supremacy and the land grab and colonization of Africa, it needed the so-called pseudoscientists or science falsely so-called to um, define other people, you understand, the African people, the people who are going to be divided and conquered in order to take their land and be some sort of middle manager. It, it, it's very interesting when we see what the root of this is. The phonetic system of the whole family is one of the richest. Now, in commenting on this language, they're saying the phonetic system of the whole family is one of the richest, nor is it lacking in harmony. As a rule, words are modified not by suffixing, but by prefixing the various elements of relationship. So they're giving us a little bit of technical on the language, and then further they're going to then say, well, these are in the eastern branch, central branch, western branch, because Africa is a big, big place. So they recognize they had to create these terminologies following up on what the Mohammedans did with the term kafir. You understand? Where kafir was a terminology from Arabic that meant infidel, kafir. Then they came along with a terminology invented by one of their um, German linguists and the term bantu, which they say is preferable, you understand, for them. So this is what's behind, and once again, let's, let, let's take a look at um, the individual. This is him right here who developed this terminology, um, Valheim, Valheim Bleak, or his whole name over here, Valheim Heinrich Emanuel Bleak, who developed this terminology arbitrarily, Bantu. And this terminology has stuck to this very day, but it's a false terminology. And it's just like if we were to call his people, the Germans and the Dutch and Central Europeans, call them Volks, and their language Volkssprachen, because it means folk speak, like Volkswagen, you understand, or Volkswagen. So we're not going to call them German. We're not going to recognize what they call themselves. But we're going to define them. So they basically beat the Africans, you could say, to the punch by defining them. And the root of it, which we said that we were just going to um, add in to this um, brief uh, lecture on Bantu, is when we go to Adam in Genesis 2 and 19. Pay careful attention. Remember how we define the word uh, taxology, taxonomy, so forth and so on, the naming and classification of living things. 
Here in Genesis 2 and 19, it says, Out of the ground, the Lord God, or Yahweh Elohim, formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever, it says, Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Then we find further in the next verse, in chapter 20, it says that Adam gave names. Adam, Adam, the, 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 the heir, man, the, the inheritor. You could say even in a sense, earth's rightful ruler. So this is where the white man, this is the game that the white man has played on peoples, particularly on Africans uh, at home and abroad, um, is that he gives names. If you notice, the other Gentiles, he doesn't give names to them. He accepts what they call themselves. But here, he gave names to all the cattle and the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. This is how they regarded the Africans when they named them Bantu and Kafir as beasts of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. And we can see how in, in white supremacist racist rhetoric how a lot of how they have actually we have evidence how they utilize this in, in, in racial you know saying in racial terms and in racial ways. So this is the root of the idea of naming. So we have to define ourselves again. And if necessary, we have to give names to them and reject these false names that they have given us or really imposed upon us. That's what has gone on with these terminologies like Bantu. They have imposed these terminologies. And it's very interesting that individuals like this, without any academic board approval or any, any consent of the people, would actually create a terminology that people today, Africans today, are divided, are fighting against each other, are killing each other, hating on each other because of these false terminologies and um, made up ideas. You know, saying, for example, when we went to this, this right here, I'm putting Amharic and Amharic music by Anet uh, Melissa. Somebody says, P.S., I do understand Amharic, and that song was not to my taste. Then somebody had responded like this to this particular video. I said, stay away from Ethiopian videos. You nappy hair, Bantu, Zumalian, monkey. Well, we now understand why there are such, why there are such um, ignorant hatred and enmity among Africans and why one part of Africa is divided from the other part of Africa, while the white man saying to some tribes, well, listen, y'all are Bantus. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are Bantus. And, and, and this is very arbitrary what has gone on, and this is the reason why a lot of careless Ethiopians, you know, why a lot of careless Ethiopians are the way they are, brothers and sisters. You know what I mean? Some of y'all have run in to these individuals, you understand, who do not acknowledge I and I as Ethiopian Hebrews or as Ethiopians. Some of them will say, well, y'all are banned to. But now that we have a better context of the definitions used here, for example, we can actually go to some of the pages and we'll do that in a further portion. But this is this is the creed of the terminology banned to. We reject that terminology banned to. You understand the terminology Bantu is preferable to just say, well, they have a language that is similar, but just call it by uh, the name of the language, you understand, or by other references. This terminology was created during the heydays, you understand, during the glory days of white supremacy. And therefore, this sort of uh, terminology needs to be addressed, needs to be re rebuked and it needs to be rejected and replaced by other terminology. You understand? Otherwise, we should call them by terminology. You know, but but it, it, it's, it's a basic point that we do need to define ourselves. Just um, suffice it to say right there. So this is 
this is the conclusion of this second part on banter. So I hope this was helpful and check out the resources that are online that we have referred to in this particular um, subject matter, going over this particular subject matter. Give thanks and praise.